Today, I'm thrilled to be in conversation with none other than Nico Gastaldi, one of the best thrust vector aerobatic jet pilots worldwide. Coming to us from France, Nico brings his wealth of experience with hundreds of thrust vector flights on J10, Mephisto, and Ares, offering us a masterclass in the intricate world of thrust vector in aerobatics. Join us as Nico walks us through his process for gear selection, assembly, radio setup, trimming, center of gravity adjustment, and gyro tuning all essential elements for achieving max performance in turbine jets. But that's not all. Nico opens up about his latest ventures with PAU and RC gadgets. We not only delve into their just announced Pulse Sport jet, but also get some initial details into a future thrust vector jet currently in development by Nico and the PAU team, anticipated for release later this year. Hey Nico, how are you doing? Hey Ron. How are you? Fine and you? Good, good. Thank you so much for the interview. I was, uh, I am very happy to be here and to speak with you. Yeah, um, I've been following you for a while online. Um, especially lately, I've been getting into into jets, and every time I look at jet robotics, thrust vector, freestyle, uh, your name, your videos come up, uh, and it's been it's been really cool to see to see what you've been up to. So yeah, I thought it would be good to to get you here to chat about how you started, uh, what you've been up to with your projects, and also get some tips uh, for people like myself uh, to, to get the most or to make the most of their of their jets, right? Um, so maybe we can start to, to, to get to know you a bit better. Uh, why don't you kind of walk us through how you got started in, in RC, uh, and how you got to where you are right now with with jets and with this high high level of knowledge and and skill. Okay, thank you. So I'm Nicolas Gastaldi. I'm from uh, France. I am 37 years old. Um, I started the hobby by my father, which is also a modeler since uh, more than 40 years. And I started when I was uh, maybe seven or eight years old. I followed him every weekend on the airfield and uh, as soon as I was uh, enough uh, old, I started to, the, to learn uh, radio and to learn pilot skills. So um, I, I grow and I learn step by step some basic uh, settings and um, pilot skills and uh, start to, to do aerobatics maneuvers also with uh, um, aerobatic uh, gas models. And a um, few years ago, I started to comp in the uh, aerobatic models categories, gas models categories, uh, in French uh, contest and also international contest. It was in around 2000, around 2000 years, so a long time ago. And uh, I comp an uh, European Acro Cup, so I managed to win two times uh, European Acro Cup in uh, international and freestyle categories. And I also won the famous Spanish uh, Breathing Cup uh, in Huesca in Spain with a lot of best pilots, European and international best pilots at the moment. So it was very good, very good memory time and very good moments to develop uh, competence and uh, pilot skins and uh, and techn technical uh, competence also to improve uh, every time models, uh, settings, buildings. So, so okay, I started a long time ago and uh, I finally did maybe 10 years of uh, aerobatic gas uh, competition and after some two years of uh, stop, um, I came back in the hobby and uh, I managed to, I had to the opportunity to start the jet category during the 11 uh, jet power when I, I had the opportunity to be pilot there in Germany. So it was totally a new category for me, so new models also. I never tried once by the past uh, jet models. So it was very cool to try something new and something different and to to learn new new things also uh, about piloting new models new mandatory some new technical 
competence also about settings about uh, knowledge of piloting skills and um Finai, it was the start of a new something new by my hobby and i discovered that jet was pretty cool and i said to myself so i want to do more about jet categories and uh, i had the opportunity to to have some uh, swedish turbine sponsored company as start and uh, they follow me with a friend for formation fl flights during uh, four or five years and after i jet models start to be more popular more easy to to fly more easy to set up also with turbine facilities uh, with scale start with uh, everything was pretty more easy also uh, jets uh, start to be more lighter, more performance in flights. And I say to myself, okay, now it's time to discover something new also. And I start to, with my first uh, G10 CARF model with Trust Vector X system. So it was amazing at this time to discover something new and to do some uh, fast, uh, fast maneuver and also very crisp and very uh, very uh, small uh, maneuvers like flips like 3d in jets 3d in jet is totally different than aerobatic uh, gas model because you have to anticipate a lot of uh, uh, total uh, answer you have a lot of inertia you don't have any flow with uh, like in prop like in prop model with uh, any, you don't have a flow on the surface mobile surface so you have to anticipate a lot uh, in every moment, every maneuvers, and um, it is very cool because you need a lot of precision, a lot of technical knowledge in a building system, in settings, with a lot of electronic components inside, of course, gyros, power supply, servos, everything as a main role in the final performance of the plane. So I like it so much. Did it take you a long time to start feeling comfortable with some of this type of like 3D flying with jets coming from from propeller aerobatics? Yeah, yeah, because uh, I start uh, I start with G10, like I said before. G10 is a Delta model, so you have to learn uh, a different uh, approach with uh, like a delta configuration uh, it is totally different you don't have any flaps for land you have to to slow down the plane we, you have a lot of uh, uh, trust so and idle trust also so you have to manage to learn uh, how to land with a nose up and to reduce the speed and it is a, a new area for uh, normal pilots so it, you have to learn the plane and to understand how we how it flies and how you have to to pilot it so very interesting yeah i've seen some of your videos with the j10 uh, i don't know if that's the original j10 like the first j10 you 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 had or that's like a, a newer version uh but either way i've seen some of your videos with j10 and it's extremely impressive i don't think i've seen anybody pushing the j10 as hard as low and still on a very precise manner, right? It's not just throwing the sticks to the corners. It's actually uh, full control of the plane. It's been really, really impressive. Thank you. So for me, it's main main goal on every flight to be okay, impressive, but to have a lot of precision because uh, it's it's easy for everyone to do something radical to push uh, extreme on the skill on the sticks and uh, to see what happened after. So it. It is not my approach. I want to do something very fixed with very good precision. And uh, even if, if it is very hard and very low, you have to impress by the quality and not by the stress for spectators to to don't know if you, you have to crash or not. So it's my approach. So you have to, to practice a lot to have a good precision and a very radical flight also. I don't think there's a lot of people that really know, really understand what the best way to set up from assembly all the way through center of gravity, 
um, trimming, uh, Jarrod tun tuning. Uh, I think there's very few people that have a good idea of how to go through the whole process. So I think you may be the perfect person to talk about this. I, I think it would be good to dive deeper into what your process is, uh, kind of from, from a start to finish, when you're uh, putting a new plane like this, whether it's uh, you know, the, the J10, an RS, and Mephisto, generally like this type of thrust vector, high performance, aerobatic jet, how do you think of it uh, from the assembly point of view, like from, from the beginning, when you're selecting what gear to use, all the way through now you're doing the first flight, how do you tackle that and how do you go through through the following adjustments that come uh, on the first couple of flights? Can you kind of walk us through all that process? Yeah. So for me, the main things I start is the build of the plane. It's pretty important, also for, of course. So um, the secret is to be as light as possible, of course, like in an uh, aerobatic gas plane, but... I think in jets, the final approach is something different because the weight is, uh, is directly the result of performance of the plane. So, uh, with every, every jet, you will have a performance with high speed, high maneuvers, high G maneuvers, but you will, uh, have, a, you will have less precision and less domain area of, uh, in range of speed. So, if you want to, to do something radical in terms of flight, like G10, you have to build as light as possible. So you, carbon leg option is very important. You can save maybe five, 600 grams in comparison of aluminum legs. Um, on my plane, I, I, I still put the brakes. Maybe it's every year than without brakes, but my airfield is not so big, so I have to, to put brakes. And I, I had, uh, I have also smoke system because in the events, for me, it's very important to, to add also smoke system. But every, anyway, in the installation, you have to be careful to put a very high performance electronic inside, but not so big. So power supply has to be good, but not so big. Only five, six, eight channels output, it's enough because uh, GT don't need a lot of output channel. So you have to put also very, uh, very good servos with uh, good torque, but precision. The precision and the start torque is much important thing because um, when you fly straight and you pull out the, in a very hard maneuvers, the pre pre precision of servos the speed of servos and the start stroke of servos will directly have an effect on the, on the maneuvers. So you have to, to, to put very, to be very careful in the lens of control arm servos, depending, uh, the maneuver, the govern for vectors or LO1, canard. You don't need a very long uh, control arm. You have to be very short and to use the 100% resolution of uh, system of servers in order to have very good precision, speed, and to to have the maximum torque of servers. I managed to try uh, a lot of GTNs with uh, different servos manufacturers, turbine manufacturers, uh, different installation inside. So with the same airframe as start, you will have a di diff totally different result in terms of performance in flight and precision. So that's why I recommend to be very careful in the installation, to do something very clean, very to be very careful in the adjustments, no clearance, ball, every ball linkage and ball bearings uh, have to be very good with let, less clearance. For me, it's the main, main thing to start with a good plane. It's for G10, but for every jet and trust vector jet. So it is the main thing for installation. Now, when the plane is ready, you, you have to check on the, how, on your house, the, the factory CG recommendation. 
it is a good basics, even if for me, 90% of CG factory recommendation is, is front, too front heavy, is too, too nose heavy. So, but it is a good start. It is a good point start to do the maiden flight, to, to prevent any risk, to have uh, something bad in the flight. So I did the maiden flight and uh, during the maiden flight, the main thing is to trim the plane perfectly without zero. With zero is still off for first flight. And uh, I start to, to trim the plane in every condition, in every output uh, channels. And I assume, I assume you probably make sure that the center of gravity is pretty close to where you want it before spending too much time on trimming, right? Because I, as soon as you move the center of gravity, all the trimming is going to change a little bit. What's your process to validate or yeah, what, what's your process to figure out if the center of gravity is where you want it in this kind of plane? Uh, like in my experience for propeller aromatic planes, a very common approach is to do this like um, 45 degree ascending line put inverted and get a feel of how the airplane responds, right? Like if, if it tries to dive very quickly, you might be a bit nose heavy. If it tries to stay uh, in the line or in, even climb, uh, it might be total heavy. Do you use the same approach? Yeah, for me, for me, you know, it is my uh, previous uh, long time experience with the uh, gas aeropatic model. So it is the main way, the same way. Um, I start to trim the model and I start to do uh, upline applying 45 degrees uh, apply uh, negative position with a with a good speed you have to 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 put a good speed in uh, before the maneuvers and when you are in a negative position in 45 degrees you let you use you, you can see the model how is moving the model so he is going up or going down for me sweetie jet has to be in line. So maybe to growing that, to, to reducing the, the applied upline slowly, but um, slowly or not moving. So almost, almost keep the 45 degree hands off. Exactly. So it is uh, the main maneuvers to test. And after I, I tried in every condition in slow flights, you have to, to feel very comfortable in the elevator. So if the plane, you have to, to, to keep in head so then the plane has to be very um, smooth in every condition, in every, um, every channels. So the plane has to be reactive in ailerons, reactive in elevators, but not uh, LRA, aileron uh, with a good reactivity and uh, elevator too smooth. You have to, to, good, to find a good ratio in every channels and um, and then to to try in negative position and to feel that the plane is very stable on if he is going down for me he has to be as stable as possible so it's my main approach to to find the good cg and then flight by flight i try to put the cg step by step step by step um, more back, more, more on the tail position to find the limit of the model because some model can be very tail heavy. You will have, a, you will increase the performance and the reactivity in terms of maneuvers, but in the limit of uh, precision, at this, at this, at this, uh, in this moment, you will lose a lot of uh, precision. So for me, it's the limit. And then I know the limit and I know the range of the CG. So, but some other models like Mephisto, for example, uh, you will have better performance with the CG, maybe close to the nose, not on the back, because on the back you can snap very easy on the, the plane can snap very easily. So, and um, start to stall with strange, strange position. So depending on the shape of the plane and the, the style of the category of plane. So for del Delta models, you can move a lot of on the tail. Um, the limit for me, as I explained, is when you lose precision and when you feel 
uh, during uh, landing, the plane is uh, like an overing, is fixed on the overing, the, plane, the nose is, is fixed on the nose up, and for me, it's too tail heavy. So you, you have to find the good ratio. Okay, so we are now happy with uh, the center of gravity of our plane. Next step is focus on really properly trimming the plane, right? And I think this is something that, this is something with typical propeller planes is not that bad if you start with a good airframe, right? With a good build. Uh, I think with thrust vector jets, it gets a bit trickier, right? Because you now have um, both in pitch and in yaw, you have two different elements contributing, right? You have rudder and thrust vector on, on yaw, and you have elevator and thrust vector on pitch. And on top of it, when you go into a delta wing like the J10 that also has scanners, you actually have a third element that can affect uh, the trimming on pitch. So how do you approach the what 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 what's the specific set of steps you take to make sure that you are trimming the right thing, right? That you're not like going too high on thrust vector and compensating going down with elevator or canner or something like that. What what's your approach there? So the next step is to trim uh, uh, perfectly, pe uh, trim all uh, surfaces and uh, trim the thrust vector system. So the thrust vector system, the main thing to trim, it's very simple. You can, for the yaw vector, your trim, sorry, you can do some upline and to, and uh, with less wind. You have to be careful to don't have too much wind. And uh, during a uh, upline with a uh, good speed, you can see if the plane is moving on the right, on the left, and then you can trim. The plane has to, without zero, of course, huh? you have to, to, to have a, a plane very stable and very straight on the vertical position. It is the same with a uh, up down vector system, but on my own plane, I still have the trim on the up down vector mixing with uh, 11 so if you trim up down vector you will trim 11 so you will lose uh, previous trim uh, previous trim so the next step is to do some overing vertical overing very stable without rolling and you you can see directly with less wind of course if the plane is going nose down nose up uh, on the right on, on the on the left with a very stable trust uh, yeah you, you try to keep the the, the uh, throttle fairly stable yeah, yeah you you manage to to, to have a very stable stable position with a plane uh, with no speed fixed position and you can see if the plane is moving on the right left on nose down on nose up and you can adjust uh exactly the trim for the vector system uh, of course all others uh mobile sofas will uh, won't have direct effect because you don't have airflow so um, you don't have a lot of reactivity on the other surface donc it's not necessary to um, to trim other surface in this position yeah pretty much the thrust vector is the only thing affecting uh the airplane during a hover Exactly. So, um, so the trim, trims are perfect now. CG feels to be perfect or nearly perfect for, for me. And now uh, I can adjust my endpoints, uh, feelings on each, each uh, mobile part and trust vectors also. Um, for my, for me, I want to, to find a good ratio to have a good homogeneity on every surface. The plane has to be very smooth or very reactive, depending on what you want to do, what you are looking for. But you have to, to find a very good ratio on every mobile part and, we, and the trust vector system also. So it is for focus on endpoints and after of course, exponential also, also. Uh, depending pilot, it's directly the feeling of every pilot. Someone wants to, to don't put expo, very nervous plane. 
and some other output uh, very high exponential. It's a different approach. For me, I still use, I start to use 35, 40% in every surfaces. And then, depending how the plane is feeling, I adjust, uh, depending, of course, uh, the size of the plane and the size of mobile parts. For example, RS XL with uh, full span ailerons. Um, I use high weight um, throw on every condition flights for every uh, channels. So I I put I did a lot of several training flights to to find the good setting for me because I, because I start I change bank of gyros depending on the maneuvers and I change also the throw of air ones and elevators and the vector system depending maneuver. So it was not easy because I love, I love to mix some radical maneuvers and smooth maneuvers. So it was not very good to, to change every time, uh, bank and uh, dual rate also. So after some flights, I managed to find a good ratio with good exponential and uh, full weight um, in a, a all, all mobile part, all channels of the plane. So. so you have a single rate, like you're always had like full deflection and you just use exponential to to have a bit more control on precision maneuvers. Exactly. So of course on jet, you will have a very high range of velocity of speed. So the deflection will be more effective with the speed. So you have to be careful when you increase the speed, the plane will be more and more uh, reactive. So you have to be careful. But for me, I, it is my approach and uh, I feel comfortable like, like this. So at this point we have um, center of gravity, we have trim. One thing that I th one thing we've talked about is in a, in a delta wing type plane, how do you, uh, we've talked about how to handle um, flight surface like elevator uh, versus thrust vector for trimming. How do you handle the uh, canners? Because the canners and the elevator can kind of overlap each other a little bit, right? When you're doing this test, how do you, how do you know if you have to trim one or the other one or both? Um, the settings of canard will have a direct effect in the medium or high speed flight. When uh, in 3D flight, uh, canard position is not very important. In slow flight also, neutral position won't have a direct effect on the, um, on the stability of the trajectory of the plane. So you will have to, to increase the speed in medium, medium speed flight, something like that, not, not full speed also. And uh, you will see uh, when you increase the speed, if the plane uh, still will still be uh, stable, or if we lose his trajectory, if he wants to go up or go down, you are, you will see directly. And then in the reverse, you you will be in a medium of high speed position. Uh, horizontal line and you reduce the, the trust, uh, turbine trust directly. And you will see if the plane is going up slowly or going down. Normally the plane is going down when you, the, the spin is uh, decreasing. So he has to be going down, but uh, slowly, of course. If he is going down very quickly, uh, canard position is not good. You have, you will have to, to move the neutral and, uh, to increase, um, maybe some, some, some millimeters up the neutral position of the canard. Okay. And of course, this is something that you would do after you feel pretty good about the trim of the thrust vector, right? Otherwise, those changes on speed and thrust uh, could be totally due to the, the thrust vector position. Exactly. Because every settings, uh, will have a direct effect effect. So um, if you change, uh, trust position, you will change, uh, the trajectory. And if you change the canard also, so you have to, to set one, one per, uh, one. So one after the other, uh, step by step, you have to set and to see, uh, directly, um, how is going 
uh, changing one one thing on the plane. If you want to change the CG, you change only the CG. If you want to change the canard trim, you change only the canard trim. And uh, everything like this. To see the difference. If it's better or bad. So you will see directly the effect. Okay, so we've covered center of gravity, we've covered trimming, um, and we've talked about dual rates, exponentials. Um, I mean, the next step is probably looking at the gyro settings, right? A lot of the, the, the steps we've done are with gyro off to make sure that the gyro is not hiding some bad tendencies or some behaviors. Uh, now that we're happy with this, uh, let's talk about gyro. So first, maybe let's, let's talk a bit about what type of gyro you use. I believe you use power box, right? Um, and how do you approach the initial setup? So when you're at home before the first flight, how do you start setting things up uh, based on your experience? And then how do you tune as you do more and more flights with the plane? So during uh, years of uh, practicing, I managed to try uh, several uh, gyro manufacturers. Uh, Powerbox iGero SRS, Cortex Pro AR, um, and the next, the, the last one, the Powerbox uh, iSat. So um, you can see on the same plane how perform each gyro and how with the effect of each gyro performance on the plane. So it, it is very interesting to see, to see how we, how can change only the gyro the performance. So, um, for me, um, the main thing to, to set the gyro is to, to do on the field, to be sure, uh, the gain and the effect of the gyro is in, uh, good, good position. The, the, the control of gyro is in a good position to don't have any reverse, uh, uh, control. And then you, I start, uh, to put the, the two bank on the gyro with a slider on the my transmitter the neutral position of the slider is corresponding to the gyro off and the slider full one fully full up is corresponding to the bank i a and the slider in negative position is corresponding to the bank two and then um, i set on the transmitter some limitation on the slow of the slider uh, corresponding to the limitation on the gain on the gyro. To be sure, I won't have too much gain on the main test. So I put a limitation, for example, on the bank A. Bank A is corresponding to, for my flight, is corresponding to all basic maneuvers, all pattern flights with good speed, with, uh, with good speed. So more like precision aerobatics. Yeah, yeah, exactly. For G10 and RS, as soon as you will increase the speed and you want to do some uh, pattern flights, I am in bank A. As soon as I start to do some spin, to do some square loop on G10 or flips, or um, uh, Apple, uh, I know some <laughs> the name of the maneuvers. Yeah, like the flips and the pinwheels and... Flips, your flips with uh, RS, torque roll, overing, uh, rifle roll, I am in bank two. Because you will have more gain and uh, a, a better effect on the on the stabilization of the gain on the plane. So, But in start, I put, so I put some limitation in bank A. For example, I put uh, maybe 35 or 40% gain limitation on bank A. And bank two, I put limitation on 30%, something like that. To be sure, even if I put my slider uh, in maximum deflection, I will have a limitation. Still safe enough, yeah. Yeah, to be to be safe on the first flight with the gyro on. So I start with the plane, with the gyro on, and I, I see directly the effect if something is wrong or if something is, if uh, it's okay. If something is wrong, of course, I cut off the gyro. But anyway, if it's okay, I put the slide, my finger on the slider and I increase the speed of the plane in bank A and I increase the slider um, until I can see the plane start to oscillate on the wing or other channel. But 
In general T, it is uh, the wings start first to oscillate than uh, on other channels. So um, if it starts to oscillate on the wings, I reduce slowly the, the my slider position until the, the plane is start stop to oscillate. And I can see I don't I ch after that I ch I don't change the, the slider position and uh, I tried several maneuvers several speed maneuvers also and um, the main goal is to to increase the speed with um, maximum speed uh, to be safe you can put a full throttle in the up line to be sure uh, everything is okay because. It is uh, safely sa safely positioned like as um, in a horizontal line, um, and then I can see if the plane is moving or not. If it, with my slider in full position the plane is not moving, I change direct in flight the limitation of the bank A value, and I increase uh, by ten or fifteen percent, and I can see. Uh, once time again, how the plane is is feeling with the new set, the new setting. But for the most part, it sounds like you are at least for Banke for precision aerobatics. It sounds that you are trying to find like you are just slowly going up in gain until you see oscillation in each axis, and then you bring it back a little bit, right? So you're trying to get the most gain possible without without getting the plane to oscillate at the speed range that you are flying. Exactly. And you have to be careful because uh, when you will find the good gain uh, settings in bank A, for example, the wing, the wind will directly affect also the gain. So, if sometime you can fly with a lot of wind, you can see or maybe you, you may see the the plane start to oscillate also. So you you have to start to 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 so you have to test also. In every condition of uh, wind, also, and to check uh, with uh, with uh, high speed if e everything is okay or not. After that, um, every time on all my models with uh, Powerbox Gyro iSat, for me it's uh, the best gyro at the moment. Um, you can set with a very good precision all setting you want to do. do you are looking for um in every channels with high precision and i still increased the factory lock-in the factory lock-in on the power box isat is 20 and directly i put in 25 24 25 the values um, because you will increase precision on the on the maneuvers lock-in will will have a direct effect when you stop maneuvers for example, when you do uh, four point roll, each time you will stop the roll, the plane will increase the the stop precision with the lock-in with the lock-in values. Is the lock-in trying to uh, basically avoid or reduce the kind of the inertia? So if you if I'm rolling and I just and I stop, the plane will take a little bit of time to slow down. Will it, will it actually like apply a little bit of like opposite aileron, for example? Yeah, exactly. With uh, the lock-in, you can feel the plane uh, lose some inertia because uh, you will increase the precision. But you, are, you have also to find the limitation of the value because if you have a high, high value, higher values, higher value, um, as soon as you will stop the roll, the plane will uh, oscillate in the, this posi position. It might bounce a little bit. Yeah, just a little bit uh, blanking. So you have to reduce this value by two or three steps and try again. Okay, so you, by default, based on your experience, you tend to bring up the lock-in field from like 20% 20, 20 default to like 25 or so? Yeah. It is also the same with the uh, characteristic of gyros. Uh, on Powerbox gyro characteristic, you can set uh, soft, uh, normal, uh, hard, and ultra. It is it it will have direct effect effect on the gyro uh, response time. So um, 
if you change the, the characteristic by too soft by uh, hard for example the gyro will be very very fast to answer but you will have also um some uh, some effect on the gain value so you have to be careful also if the if you increase the gain and the plane is still to be very low um, still still moves you can change the characteristic of the corresponding channel and try again it will have a direct effect effect on the on the gain response do you uh, on your experience on your planes do you tend to usually use certain setting in 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 this gyro characteristics do you usually go to soft or to medium or or it depends a lot in generality i put directly on hard because uh, on trust vector the trust vector plane i want to have a direct uh, effect on the gyro for me gyro is only uh, stabilization so um, I don't have a lot of gain. Uh, I prefer to feel the plane moving and to control by myself than to to feel the plane is very low. Uh, so I increase uh, the characteristic. So you go to hard and then you have like relatively low gains. Yeah, and I, I reduce the gain and I feel the plane still moves, but I I can feel the plane by myself. So it is my main approach. I feel comfortable like this. Okay, so we've covered locking, we've uh, covered the gyro characteristic. I think the next thing probably is stick priority, right? Yeah. So stick priority is when you put you you pour on the gyro, uh, you can feel directly an effect of the plane reactivity. You can lose some reactivity on the plane overall. So on trust vector system, for example, you when you are in 3D and you if you feel the plane is too smooth, you can increase the stick priority. When you increase the stick priority, you will stop the effect on the gyro uh, quickly. So original settings for power box is 100%, and so it means that the, that the gyro will have, will have effect. Uh, from zero to one hundred percent throw of the uh, channels. If you put the stick priority to two hundred percent, you will have a, a stop on the gyro effect and the medium stick position. Okay, so on the, on the first like fifty percent of travel to the right, for example, on ailerons, the gyro is gonna have some effect. After fifty percent, you have full control on that channel. So you will feel the plane is more sensible. Okay, so the higher the value, the faster you are taking over the gyro completely. Exactly. So you have to feel to find a good balance, uh, depending what you are looking for and depending your feeling also. Um, but uh, anyway, my recommendation is to change step by step each settings and to see what happened. And to be careful, and uh, because gyro will have direct effect on the plane. So, for example, if you put a bong B channel with 100 gain in full speed, you will have a direct uh, like a fluttering. Uh, so it is very dramatical situation. So you have to be careful. Okay, uh, so I think I think some of these parameters we've talked about uh, are probably close enough to what other brands like you know with with the Cortex Pro for example. I think you have similar settings like lock-in, uh, stick priority. Um, the other one that is also pretty common, but I believe even though they have like similar naming, I think they're pretty different. Is the attitude assist or or um, or the heading hold, right? Uh, can you talk a bit about about that? How how different brands have this how different brands handle this and how do you like to set this app in your plans so i tried by the past uh, some uh, editing lock on the cortex pro uh, for example editing lock on the l ones so i put in editing lock on the l ones and when you put editing lock the plane is uh, is locked totally locked so for example i was in overing 
And I start to, to move the L1 stick and rudder stick to start to, to do a circle. And the, pay, the plane uh, still continue in straight uh, position. So it was totally strange. Someone will like it because uh, the plane is on uh, like auto control. It is very stable. But if you want to do something by yourself and to control the plane, to still control the plane, um, it is not a good idea. For, so I directly deactivate it. Um, and I tried also on the last ISAT for Box Gyro. And it, it is a totally different approach. It is not a heading block. It is attitude assist, like his name. So it is, it will increase the stabilization of the plane because when you put on the attitude assist, you will, you still have the, the deflection until the plane is going on the straight position. But as soon as you will move the stick, you will uh, disable the effect. So for example, you are in over ring. The plane is going on the right. On the left, so for example, the plane with the attitude assist on will compensate with L1 on the right, and the plane will will start to go on the right and will be very stable. As soon as the plane is in horizontal position, you will have L1 on the neutral position again. Or if you want to move the sticks, you will disable the direct effect on the attitude assist. So for my feeling, I found I found that the plane is much more stable on the wing. You you can see a lot of planes during uh, jet models with trust vector system will uh, during overing the plane is still balancing on the wing, still uh, oscillating like this. So with attitude assist on and the good gain also because you you are it is uh, it is mixing, you will have a better stability. But I tried also uh, to put attitude, attitude assist on the vector up and down. Someone like, so, but for me, I don't like also because the plane uh, has still the nose up. And uh, for me, I, I don't feel comfortable, but uh, I don't, I can, I can feel if the plane needs more speed or more trust or more uh, compensating on some surface or not. But for me, I don't like this. I just put attitude assist on ailerons. Okay, so with Powerbox, you would put attitude assist on ailerons. If you were using Cortex, sounds like you probably would not use heading hall at all. In Cortex, uh, I, I disable anything. Yeah. Cool. I think that's a that's a really good uh, walkthrough. I, I guess there is one more optional thing, especially with Powerbox. I know Powerbox has some kind of like GPS unit that lets you. Based on the speed at which you are moving, you can adjust gains or something like that. Do you make use of anything like that? Yeah, yeah. I tried with J GPS or not. It is depending uh, what you what is your model. If you have a model with high speed range and trust vector system, GPS is very good because uh, as soon as you will increase the speed, GPS will uh, have direct effect on the gyro and uh, will reduce the gain. So you can set with more precision the gain depending on the maneuver you are you are doing. So if you are doing some pattern flight, you can increase the gain, and as soon as you will increase the speed, the plane the gain will uh, reduce by uh, by by itself. But as soon as you will slow down the plane, gain will incre will be increased because the GPS will uh, will see some uh, slow speed. So you can manage to do some more precision settings, and for me, it's very good. So something like the RS, for example, could be pretty useful. Right? I think the RS is probably one of the most, the widest flight envelope. Yeah, for example, for RS, it's very good because um, you will you have a very big turbine inside, and uh, you you can fly speed, you can fly very slow also. But with a full uh, full deflection anyway, anywhere, uh, GPS have a main role in the uh, final results. So it's very easy to set the GPS. You will have a coefficient from one to five. <coughs> if you put one, uh, it means that the plane won't have a lot of range speed. It is slow slow plane, for example. 
like par flyer or something like that. So if you, in a reverse position you uh, you will put uh, five, it means like the plane can fly very speed. So the gain will reduce directly with a uh, high range. And uh, when you slow down the plane, it will increase the, the gain by the main value you are uh, you set on the previous uh, flight. Okay, so something like a something like an RX RS that has like a big, you know, you can go very fast, you can go very slow. Um, GPS would be really really useful if you are doing uh, if you are doing a plane without thrust vector, where you are always doing medium to high speed. It's probably not that critical still could be a bit useful right like a high speed pass versus a slow pass but probably a bit less critical and something like a j10 maybe a memphisto they are a bit slower planes right uh, maybe it's not as as needed yeah it's depending how you, how you fly with a plane and uh, what is the type of plane the type of plane also we talk about uh how you like to use a single rate and just find the right exponential setting that lets you control the plane comfortably at low speed, high speed, 3D, precision robotics. Um, for um, thrust vector, um, do you turn it on and off based on the maneuver or do you keep it on at all times? No, for me, it's very simple. It's full deflection every time in G10 and uh, Mephisto or RS. Um, I tried on the past to change also to to delay the the vector for normal flight, but for snaps, for example, for sport jets like Mephisto RS, vector system will uh, increase the snap uh, start because uh, you will uh, have um, the nose directly up, and uh, you will facilitate the snap. So um, so I I still fly with full deflection, but you have to be very careful when you full you fly full deflection with vector. G10 not, because it is not very difficult plane, but on a sport jet like Mephisto RS, you have a very high lateral surface and a very reactive uh, rudder. So if you mix a rudder with uh, your system, uh, you have to be careful to don't have the plane uh, snaps or something like that. So that's why you have to find the good exponential position and you feel very you very smooth with sticks. Mm. Um, so it sounds like your uh, your transmitter workload is relatively simple. I'm guessing that you only have one switch for uh, switching gyro banks, right? If you have if you are doing precision robotics high speed, you go to the I guess bank A for um, lower gain. And if you go to flips and 3D and slow flight, you might switch to, to bank two, and that's that's about it. That's pretty much the only thing that you must be um, switching back and forth during during a flight, right? Yeah, it's not easy because um, I still try to mix, like I said before, to mix maneuvers, to mix pattern flights uh, with snaps, with uh, flips, with. Uh, something totally different in the same maneuver. So you have to manage and do things before the maneuvers. Okay, I want to do something like this. I, ha I have to change the bank A to, to bank eight from to bank two, and after to bank two to bank A, because if I still uh, do the maneuver in bank A, I will have less precision, so the plane can move. And in reverse, uh, uh, if I do the maneuvers with bank B, I will have too much gain. So I still have to think before the maneuvers. Okay, I want to do this. I, uh, how is the um, gyro position? And I have to. I, during the flight, I change every time bank A, bank two, bank A, bank two. Yeah, that sounds like one more reason to not have additional settings to move around, right? Like like dual rates or thrust vector on and off. Like if you start flicking too many switches, then it's very easy to, to make mistakes. Exactly. Again, with propeller planes, I think it's pretty well understood what type of deflections you want to have for if you're doing precision robotics or you're doing 3D extreme robotics. Uh, with a thrust vector, I think you have a couple more options, right? Um, for example, let's say in pits, you could have um, the full 45 degree deflection up and down on elevator. Um, or you could have little deflection elevator 
for high speed or medium to high speed and then just rely completely on thrust vector to do those like really sharp maneuvers like how do you approach um how much deflection to put especially especially on the tail especially on uh elevator and rudder in comparison to the to the movement you get in thrust vector for me the the de concerning the thrust vector is very simple i try to put uh, mechanical limitation so the maximum uh, deflection in yo and pitch and mixing both of them because uh, when you mix you can see directly the mechanical uh, limitation so it is depending the system the limitation is directly depending of the system you mean you try to go as far as physically possible oh ah, yeah 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 uh yeah the maximum deflection of vector and uh on g10 i cut the uh, nozzle fiber nozzle to increase the deflection and uh, i tried also a lot of size of vector lens of vector and you can see directly an effect of the reactivity of the plane so my actual g10 do you find any downside like for example yesterday i happened to be i'm building right now a j10 uh coincidentally uh pilot rc j10 the 2.8 meter uh and i was looking at the thrust vector setup um and you have some factory recommended settings right i think it says uh 20 millimeters for 3d on uh, thrust vector on on yo and rather uh and i believe it's like 28 millimeters um on on pits I actually could get significantly more, like mechanically. Um, I had to go to a relatively small size servo arm in order to get to those deflections. I could easily go to slightly bigger arm and get significantly more. Is that, that sounds like that would be your approach. Like actually you would go pretty, pretty high there. Exactly. What you said, you have to find a good ratio because uh, you can put a very high deflection, but it means yeah, then you will have a very long uh, control arm so you can lose some precision and direct torque of servos <coughs> so i i saw several times planes very smooth with a maximum deflection and you as soon as you you put a stick up with a pitch uh, full deflection plane was very smooth i don't understand why, and then i don't understand why directly and after, when I check the plane, I fix uh, the vector by myself, by my hand. I move the sticks. Anyway, anything was moving. So um, that's why with it, because of the problem with the truss vectoring, as soon as you want to, to do something hard in flight, you will increase uh, the trust. So you will increase the flow inside the pipe. So you will increase some constraints. And you want also up to maximum deflection. So you have a lot of stress in, the, in servos. So that's why you need very high performance servos. And to find the ratio between the control arm lens means good precision and good torque and very long arms, but you will, you won't have a, you, you will uh, reduce the speed and the precision and torque of the servo. So you have to try. You definitely have to make sure that the geometry and resolution is good. But it sounds like if you have strong enough servos, if the geometry is correct, it sounds like you tend to prefer as much uh, deflection as possible. Like you, you are not concerned that, oh, this is going to be too much and it's not going to be useful or, or it's going to be too aggressive. Like it, it sounds like you want to have that additional uh, deflection and thrust. Maximum deflex deflection will have a direct effect on flips. Every other maneuvers, it's less sensible because uh, with overwing you don't have you don't need a lot of deflection. Flat spin also, uh, it is flips. If you want to do some very very small flips, you need a lot of deflection. All right, I think that's a really, really good deep dive into setting up one of these planes. I know a lot of people will really appreciate this. Um, maybe we can change gears. Let's talk a bit about um, some of the other stuff you've been doing. Um, so I, I should mention this because I have watched this video very recently. I recently watched this um, freestyle to the music that you did 
at Sam Erso, maybe in Italy, I think, uh, with the RS. Okay, that was really, really good. Like, I don't think I've seen... I don't think I've seen a freestyle with a jet basically flying, dancing to the music as much as the one I saw from you. I think usually, you know, it's not very common to see jets flying to the music in general. And if you do, for the most part, the music is just on the background. Uh, I think this freestyle with, uh, with you and the RS was probably one of the first ones that is really maximizing the potential of the play, like doing snap rolls, doing precision robotics, doing uh, really good like rifle rolls and 3D. It's, it's, it's almost like an extreme robotics freestyle with a jet, which is pretty unusual. Um, is that that you are you are trying to push on? It, it seems like you are trying to, to kind of really push boundaries there and and almost almost make a new type of flying with jets, right? That, that almost nobody else is doing. Yeah, uh, I said by myself uh, since long time, I have to create a freestyle flight with uh, music because in air show, it is something totally different when you fly with or without music. So um, when I, at start of the season, I did the maiden flight of the RS. Uh, at start, I say to myself, okay, this plane is... Ex something uh, exceptional. So with this plane, I must have to create to create a freestyle routine. So it's not easy because you have to find music to do a comp composition. So and I in four or five minutes, I want to to show all capacities of the plane and myself also. And to show, like you say, the precision flights, snaps, uh, slow speed flights, for, of course 3D, but 3D with something different also, uh, with uh, your flips, with um, something new. So um, it is good, and uh, I have to practice a lot all, again during the winter. I have a lot of new maneuvers in to try in my head, and I would like to comp uh, on the future on freestyle jet competition but uh, unfortunately actually we don't have any uh, freestyle jet competition we have on, only um, gas aerobatic competition so let's see on the future if uh, some someone want to create one anyway uh, i will perform uh, this new routine in the new season and uh, normally in the uk western park and uh, german jet power and uh, of course all uh, events I will be present. So yes, it's very cool to, I think, to see uh, Jet performs with music. And I had a, a good, very good feedback. So I think not perfect. I have to practice a lot again, but uh, it's good. Yeah, no, I think it's, it's really good. And I think it's really exciting. I think the reason why you are not seeing pretty much any competitions doing freestyle with jets. I think that the closest team probably is the European Extreme Flight Championships this this past year uh, that were doing the tandem formation. I, I believe that the reason why they do tandem is again because there's almost nobody doing this type of like hardcore almost extreme aerobatics routine with the jets. I think when you have like a milder type of flight, if you have like two planes in the air, you can like be a bit more creative with a pushing the boundaries of the flight itself as much, right? Um, I think I think more people need to start, you know, building those skills and building the 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 freestyle routines that are like that good to, to get to get enough people to actually make a competition. I think I think it's something we'll probably be seeing more and more in the future though. Uh, it's it's one of the most spectacular things that you can see, right? So um I will do the same with the G ten also. Oh really? Yeah yeah sure. It's good also I I am I am doing one with G ten. Nice. Can't wait to see that one. Um, do you like using simulator to to get the initial um, routine ideas, like to, to do some? I, I found myself, you know, when when I used to compete uh, with propeller planes uh, in freestyle, uh, I think one of the challenges is what you were saying. It's like you need to come up with, figure out the music, come up with ideas, the maneuvers, and I think the beginning can be pretty difficult, right? Like once once you have something with a good amount of shape. Um, you can just tweak and tune little things, but at the beginning, when you don't have anything, 
um, it's really hard to just like play a song, go to the field, and hope that things will work out. Do you use simulator to to get the initial um, attempts uh, out of the way a bit faster, or do you do everything in the in the field? I did some simulator flights uh, years ago when the simulator uh, start to be present. But uh, to be honest, uh, no, I don't practice a lot of simulators because uh, after 10, 13 minutes, I start to do something not good. <laughs> I'm not, uh, I don't have a lot of concentration in simulator, so I practice in direct flights. So it's not, it's not good for plane because uh, if each flight you, you have to push uh, more and more in, with my own plane, but in a way, I, pr I prefer to fly directly in reality. I never find uh, models in simulator with the same uh, feeling like my own. So um, even on the light, uh, the last uh, rail flight with uh, RS or something like that. Yeah, you can do uh, everything. It's good, but uh, it's not the reality. <laughs> yeah, especially, especially in those more specialized models. I think a lot of those are just other RC pilots uh, that that build those planes, that those models for real flight, and most of them probably didn't get the chance to fly the real plane, right? Like probably the the RS you might have tried in real flight probably was built in the computer by somebody that might not have had a chance to actually fly the real plane, so it's never gonna be the same. Um, the um, other thing that I thought was interesting to chat about was uh, your new relationship with uh, PAU and RC Gadgets. Uh, I know you recently started working with them. You traveled to Dubai. Can you talk a bit about uh, about those new projects? Yeah, of course. I met uh, Yasin and Youssef from RC Gadget uh, last year during my last year uh, event in uh, India. And uh, as soon as we start to talk together, we had a very good feeling and uh, they share me the coming, coming soon project and they wanted to, to do some new models in jets also. So um, we started to, commu to, to do some discussion during uh, all the year together. And now it's official. Uh, I am pilot for them. I am very happy because, uh, as, I, as I said, we have a very good relation, very, very good feeling. It's for me, it's very, very important. And um, they started with uh, the Pulse jet. It is a sport jet, speed jet, speed and slow, slow speed jet. But uh, it is not a trust vector system jet. Uh, I managed to do some test flights on the plane uh, during my last uh, coming in uh, Dubai in uh, last Dece December, one month ago. And the plane is, it is a prototype, but uh, the plane is very good, very stable, and you can fly speed, slow. Uh, you can do every pattern maneuver with, uh, with no problem, with high precision. So they are ready to start the production. The production will be directly by uh, done by uh, in Dubai. And um, we have, uh, of course, uh, you know, I am a trust vector pilot, so we have a new project coming soon. So I can say the lot. Uh, as I can say, it is uh, it will be a Delta model with a trust vectors. It is not J10. We want to do something different. And uh, we work. We are working together to create a good plane with uh, my all experience cross vector flights. So um, let's see. I think it would be very cool and very good plane. So normally the prototype will be ready next month or next two months. I will come to Dubai to do some test flights, to do a lot of test flights also, to to check everything, to perform the plane, and uh, to check so if the airframe is okay and, uh, and if you, we are ready to start the production. So um, it is a future plan, and of course, uh, production series will start just after when you, every test will be performed. And I will, uh, I will prepare mine uh, just after. It sounds like it's something that we might see more of 
uh, this year in 2024? Yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, normally, the plan is to to build my own model, so the serial production model, current uh, April. So I will be ready for the season. And uh, for the season and for the night season also, because I want to fly with uh, this new model during a nice flight show. So <laughs> let's see. Um, so you said it's like a Delta Wing, not J10. What, um, what's the general idea, or what's the general goal um, in terms of what, what would you like you and the rest of the team try to achieve uh, in terms of, you know, this is the J10, this is what it does well. What are you hoping to achieve that will be a bit better? To, to increase some point of the G10 characteristic, knowing like uh, G10 has a small wing area, so we will have a bigger area to increase the stability of the plane, to increase uh, not the roll rate, because the roll rate of the G10 is very important, but the roll rate in the 3D maneuvers, because with uh, small wings, uh, during uh, 3D maneuvers, you can lose a lot of uh, reactivity on the wings. So it is the main goal and also to increase the canard, to increase once time again the limit of the plane. Even if the actual limit of the G10 is very high, I want to do some something more, <laughs> more radical also. And uh, we will have a central turbine not on the back like on the G10, we will have a central turbine inside the fuselage for two, re two reasons, because in Europe we have uh, some uh, sound, some noise uh, limitation restriction. So with the truss pipe, you reduce directly the noise, uh, the noise uh, effect. And uh, to have a central mass uh, all around the CG, and uh, to reduce some uh, inertia effect during spin, very very fast spin or something like that. So let's see. Um, but it is the main idea of the project. And uh, to have a project with a very high quality airframe, of course, and uh, very light, of course. It is uh, the main point also. That's very cool. I know that a lot of people... I haven't had a chance to fly the J-18 yet, uh, but I've talked to, to a couple of people that have, and everybody seems to really, really like it. Uh, so I think within within Thrust Vector Aerobatic Pilots, I think it's a plane that has really good um, reviews. So I think it's going to be interesting to see uh, a kind of an improved, different version uh, with the same general Delta Wing concept um, in mind. That, that's going to be really exciting. Thank you, yeah. Let's see. I think maybe one more thing uh, to cover is you recently went to India, right? Uh, can you tell us a bit what, what you were up to over there? So it is my third time in uh, India. Um, each time it is a very good uh, opportunity to, to meet new friends and new pilots. Um, it is very very good, uh, very good area with a very good hospitality, very good persons. So I managed to do, to do um, I managed to to do a lot of uh, flights, uh, training flights. I set a lot of uh, play, new planes, and um, we had also uh, internal events with a lot of uh, India people. So it was very cool, and I did also before my India venue some. Uh, three days in uh, Dubai, like I said in the previous steps, uh, to, to perform some test flights on the Pulse from PAU. When you were either in Dubai or in India, are you doing any kind of like teaching, clinics, something like that to, to kind of like transfer some skills to, to other pilots? Yeah, yeah, of course. The, the main, the main, my main venue in, uh, in, in India in 18, was concerning to 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 do some coaching for 3D maneuvers uh, about G10 uh, overing or uh, setting planes and uh, to do some coaching about uh, 3D maneuvers and uh, of course it is the same idea but uh, also a lot of d display flights 
and uh, to share our good moments uh, all together. So I'm very happy to have the opportunity to, to go there. Yeah, sounds like a lot of fun. When you're working with uh, other pilots, either on the setup or on the flying side, um, do you have any any general tips uh, that you, you know you've seen people tend to either struggle with this thing or um, yes, yeah, is, is there something that you see uh, people either struggle with or tips that you give people that are particularly helpful that that you see usually make a difference? There are a lot of different points, but uh, settings of models, like, like I explained uh, minutes ago, uh, show the direct, direct effect on the performance and facility of the plane in flight. So um, fi to find a good CG position, uh, uh, good uh, gyro uh, settings, uh, you can also do a lot of settings in, inside the turbines concerning the, the activity of turbines about acceleration, deceleration. Depending on the plane, you will have a direct effect. And uh, as soon as uh, I change something, the, in generality, they, they, say, they say to me, oh, it's easy now. <laughs> this is totally a new model. So it's, it's cool to see, uh, to see the direct effect. What about uh, on the flying skills side? Is there anything that people tend to struggle with the most uh, that, um, you know, with, with certain tips, they, they, they take a step forward? In generality, they practice, uh, they fly with, uh, most, most of them are flying with RC gas models. But uh, someone are also flying G10 and they... I, I help a lot with uh, overing stabilization and uh, to manage to feel the plane uh, comfortable when, to feel comfortable when the plane is uh, moving uh, on the overing position. So to manage uh, trust and to to feel how you are how you have to, to move the nose to, to change uh, the position and to increase the stability and to stop the oscillation on the wing. And yeah, tips can help directly. Yeah, I think one of the typical things I see often, both with J10, but with pretty much any thrust vector yet, is um, a lot of wing rocking, right? When people try to start doing or learning Harriers, hovers, anything slow speed, I tend to see a lot of wing rocking. And my impression is that people don't really know very well how much of that is due to setup, right? Like, is that something that they should be looking at gyro settings to 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 keep the plane more locked in, or is it the center of gravity thing, or is it that they should be, um, you know, actually flying the plane a bit more and helping, like with with um, propeller planes, right? That you commonly don't see gyros, right? And you have to do a lot of a lot of help with the ailerons. It is difficult to say because um, all all things can have a direct effect on the rocking of the ring. So you have to check, of course, the CG on first. And then, as we explained in previous minutes, CG and then the j row, you can uh, increase the gain. And also the position of the plane during overing. You have to increase the angle of attack of the fuselage to increase the stability. If the plane is still working, it seems you have a wrong uh, CG, maybe no AV or something like that, or about setting on the gyros, or um, a bad position of the angle or attack of the fuselage. You have to increase it. Or also, I think also, um, you need to increase the trust also. As soon as the G10 start to work in, you increase the trust. It seems as a plane, um, you 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 have, you don't have enough uh, trust. With um, propeller three D planes, when you're doing those type of like high alpha Harriers, um, the pilot usually is doing a lot of work on the ailerons to keep the plane straight, like the wings uh, level. With J10, RS, Mephisto, when you're doing those type of maneuvers, is the expectation there that if you have 
everything right, you know, the center of gravity, the um, gyros properly uh, set up, and you are at the right angle of attack with the right thrust. Is the expectation or the goal that for the most part you don't need to do a lot of that fighting back and forth, or you still do a bit of, of that aileron work? Uh, normally, you, you don't have to fight a lot because uh, stabilization of the gyro will help to, to reduce uh, the working of the wing. Anyway, it is depending if you want to feel the plane very lock or if you want to pilot by yourself also. Um, if you want a very stable plane, you put a full, ga full gain and um, it will be better. But you, for me, you will reduce the performance of the plane and um, also the pilot skills. So it is depending your your feeling. Yeah, I can imagine also depends a lot on the flying style and level of skills of its pilot, right? Like if you are just learning how to harrier a, a plane or a, or a jet, it's probably beneficial to have attitude, attitude uh, hold and high gains and just help you as much as possible to keep the plane in high angle of attack stable. If somebody like you is way past that when you are just trying to go from a harrier to a circle to a flip, you probably want to have less help, more unstable plane to let you actually control and do those type of maneuvers, right? Yeah, it is my own feeling, but, uh, but depending uh, for each pilot, it is maybe something different. Cool. Well, I think this was super helpful. I'm sure a lot of people will really learn a lot of tips and tricks around setup, around um, pretty much anything related to, to thrust vector jets, really. Um, so I, I really appreciate you, you being here with us. Um, I'm really excited to see what you, uh, and the RC gadgets team, um, kind of comes up with, uh, in the, this year with the, with the new thrust vector plane and the pulse. Um, so yeah, maybe later this year we can have you back on and chat about, about those new, new projects once they are, once they're released. Yeah, of course. I have a lot of projects coming soon, so we can speak a lot <laughs> in next month uh with a new model so uh, coming soon and a uh, new project so normally it it will be a good season so let's see <laughs> yeah sounds like it's gonna be a lot of fun awesome well thank you again nico it was really fun chatting with you thank you so much juan and uh, see you soon i hope all right bye bye see you later bye bye bye